Hey, what's up Stream Keepers and welcome back to my channel. And today is a, actually a very special occasion. Uh, I actually wanted to you know, give a special shout out to all those uh, who are celebrating Chinese New Year. Gong Xi Fa Cai. You know, uh, it is our Chinese uh, tradition to actually, uh, we, we do have our Chinese New Year. Uh, and that is also the reason why we have this special edition today. Uh, we just wanted to take this opportunity to you know, thank everybody for the support and to provide more information and provide more you know, knowledge in terms of uh, stream breeding as well. So for, you know, for those who, are, who, are, who have been asking me some of the questions like for example, um, why do my streams die after a water change? I think that is something that you know, I get quite a lot of uh, you know, uh, questions around, around those. Uh, so I thought that maybe it will be a good uh, topic that I will talk about. Uh, however, you know, there is actually no hard and fast rule. There's actually no one uh, definite answer to this. Um, what I did is that, you know, I kind of like conceptualized it into two, two different uh, big buckets. Uh, and of course, you know, one that is controllable, the other is not controllable. So for example, I think one of the most, uh, most frequently asked question is that, you know, uh, during a water change, after I did the water change, um, my stream die. So it can be one, it can be two. And over time, every time I do a water change, the stream die. Um, and one of the biggest uh, reason for, for having this is that for those, um, like, like what I like to share is on water parameters. And why do I talk about water parameters? So water parameters is actually a, a very large topic that I uh, have discussed before, you know, the hard water parameters and the soft water parameters. So there has been a lot of ongoing conversations around uh, water changes, you know, uh, should I remineralize in a tank, should I remineralize uh, outside and then, you know, drip it in and things like that. Um, so there is really no one right way of doing things. Uh, how we do it is that during water change, we will just drain the water, put in new uh, zero TDS water and then we remineralize directly into the tank. Uh, we don't use salt in the sense that we don't use the granules, we actually uh, pre-mix it in a bottle and then, you know, uh, squirt it in, in, in the tank. Um, and, and, you know, people with, is, I think what is confusing for a lot of people is that uh, they try to mimic the, the exact same water parameters uh, in their reservoir to the, to the tank. However, you know, from a hot water perspective, you know, hot water in the sense that, you know, your pH, your KH, your G, if, Let's take for example, if you make every one of it the same, right? And if you drip it in into the tank, um, you know, and your stream still die, I think that's where you know there's a lot of uh, discussion going on, and they are saying that uh, I have been keeping you know my water parameters exactly the same, so the waters that come from the reservoir to, into my tank, uh, it is the same type of water that is in my tank um, before I did the water change. Uh, so here, I think. From a hot water perspective, I think that is correct. You know, your parameters are, are, are the same. However, you know, the soft water parameters, that is where it is actually different. And how does it really impact um, the soft water parameters in terms of the, the stream dying? So, you know, we can only see whatever that we can test. There are some of the things that we cannot test. Like for example, you know, um, you will never be able, let's say if you're gonna uh, siphon out the water with uh, the microorganisms, you are not going to replace microorganisms from the, the the tank or the reservoir. So that's I think one of the you know difference in there uh, that that you know people would not have thought about uh, in the sense that you know yes the hot water parameters is the same. However, actually they are not exactly the same because the water that is going into the tank they are actually quite you know they are fresh they are they are raw um, they are not mature in the sense. Um, so, so it's kind of uh, different in, in, in that. And, and there's another thing that actually contributes a lot. And I realized that uh, through many discussions with the breeders, um, that is, you know, after every water change, they, they, they do a lot of additives. They add this, they add this, and they add that. So I think that is where, you know, um, I, I term this the, 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 the tipping point or the iceberg methodology or the iceberg concept where you actually only see, you know, the surface of the iceberg. Actually, you know, below the, the iceberg, there's a huge uh, problem that is slowly starting to arise in the sense that, you know, your, 
your sponge filter could already be at the very maximum but you you wouldn't know when when the tipping point is until something happened so that is where you know uh, a lot of times uh, i advise uh, breeders is that we keep things simple so that we can actually pinpoint what the problem is but if let's say you're going to add in a, a ton of thing in the tank uh, there is actually no way to actually extract the thing like for example if you're going to add a, a powder in the tank you're going to mix it how are you going to extract it from the tank so anything that goes in the tank is, is very difficult for you to extract it and that's where you know uh, the, the issue arises because um, as we add more things in there there may be a you know a, a conflicting interest in terms of the water parameters and things like that against the stream so that is why we are always trying to uh, advocate you know simplicity to keep it easy not really easy but to, to be simple in the sense that uh, so that you can actually know what is going wrong if let's say you know something actually happens so that's uh, from a water parameters perspective so coming to another perspective is you know what are some of the other possible factors that can uh, impact the stream to die after a water change is that you know probably you know all living things die you know uh, so it could be due to age it could also due to be stream stress you know stress uh, stress in the sense that you know it it has been accumulated over a long period of time like for example if your water parameters are uh, are not as ideal um, it, it has accumulated a lot of stress and then um, you know you keep knocking down the tank and things like that so these are some of the things um, and also frequent water uh, fluctuation so this is something that i would like to maybe talk a little bit more in depth in a sense that you know every time we advocate you know a uh, weekly water change of maybe five ten percent twenty percent some of them uh, however you know if let's say your bio load is not very high there is really no reason for you to do a water change if let's say your nitrate is at 5 to 10 ppm for what first week second week and third week so you can actually top them up top the water up with uh, zero tds water and then eventually you know uh, have do a water change when there's uh, you know a higher higher nitrate level so having to do a lot of water changes every time you do a water change there's a fluctuation regardless of whether is it a new water or is it uh, you remineralize the water in the tank or uh, in the reservoir it doesn't matter so every time there's a water change there is a fluctuation it's going to happen so that's the reason why we want to keep the tank as simple as possible so that the, the fluctuation is as less as possible so that's something that I I, I would really encourage your, you guys to actually think about you know in terms of you know uh, additives and things like that um, and from a water changing perspective you know uh, it doesn't mean that you know if you stick to the the, the general rule of weekly uh, water changes is going to do a lot of good to you however you know we have to learn the rules unlearn them and then relearn them again because there are times where uh, that there, there's simply too many you know too frequent water changes that uh, impedes the, the the stream you know it discourages the stream to actually uh, breed and uh, more often than not uh, I have actually uh, you know seen some of these breeders as well uh, got some feedback and, and realized that you know uh, you know if we always follow the methodology of you know uh, having what weekly water changes um, even if let's say you have you know five streams in a, four, a 10 gallon 20 gallon tank or you know 40 liter tank uh, it's not going to it's, it's, it's something that we can really uh, you know look into uh, instead of just following the the, the process as is so another one I would like to talk about is actually male to female ratio. I think I have done a video on that. Uh, so long story short, male to female ratio, select out your males. Do not put too many males in the tank because uh, what we like to do is that we like to use two males to 10 females, 20 females. I think that's, that's okay. Having more females is fine, but having more males is not going to be easy because the males, if let's say there's only one female and five males, if the female mode you know, is going to grab hold on her and then she'll get injured. Um, so the next point is actually narrow genetics so narrow genetics means that there has been a lot of uh, inbreeding line breeding and that's where some of the genetics they are actually weaker in the sense that um, the streams by themselves is already weak so you know uh, any slight fluctuation and things like that they, they tend to uh, react more to it so that's something that you know uh, it's, it's really a sourcing strategy uh, this is something that you have to really look into as well think through it um, and then we come into the controllable factor so there are some of the things that we can control some of the things we cannot control so whatever that we can control I think there's something that we would like to share with you uh, like for example too much additive so there's something that 
uh, we advocate that keeping it simple. We do not want to have too much additives. Uh, the age of the stream is something that you can also control uh, in the sense that you would have to share with the breeder or the, the person that you're going to buy that you really want uh, juvenile streams or, or younger streams so that you know you don't buy a, a, a old stream that maybe give you one or two breeding cycle and that's, that's the end of it. And stream stress as well. So I think stream stress is that uh, especially for new breeders who are very, you know, you know they are very passionate of it. Uh, into it, they actually sit down in front of the tank for three hours straight, staring at the same tank, staring at the stream. That actually uh, creates some stress to the stream. I think you can, you know, casually still see them and things like that, but do not stress them out too much. Um, and of course, you know, stream stress can also be triggered by uh, the likes. You know, if you if you have a controlled timing, I think that's fine. But if you keep turning it on and off, I think that's uh, something that the stream will be a uh, stress upon, stress about if let's say if it's a new stream. So another one is, you know, a frequent fluctuation like I've mentioned, uh, that is something that we can control. Uh, think about, you know, having uh, water changes, but however, if let's say your bio load is low, you can actually skip that tank and move on to the next tank. The very last one that is controllable is male to female ratio. And that's the reason why, you know, we want to actually advocate uh, selective breeding and then, you know, to learn how to, you know, differentiate male and female and then scoop the males out so that we can have a proper uh, ratio in, in the tank. So in all of this, I actually also wanted to, you know, move on to the next, next uh, you know, uh, area where we can talk about. There are actually, uh, I categorize them into three different types of streams. Um, you know, the less demanding one, the quite demanding ones, and the very demanding ones. So it, it is in no rule of order in the sense that you no know, deep blue boat can be very demanding in terms of uh, fluctuation and things like that. It also very depends on the genetics of it. So it does not mean that uh, an easy stream for you is an easy stream for that person. So, so these are some of the things that you know we have to really think about uh, in terms of um, water changes and, and things like that. So because uh, at the end of the day, you know, uh, the decision to make the water change has to be of an intent. If the intent is to reduce the nitrate, I think that's that's okay. But if let's say the, the nitrate level is at 5 ppm, then what are you trying to remove? Maybe something else that you would like to remove. But if there's nothing else, then just leave the tank alone. Let it stabilize over the next two to three weeks. I think that is something that, you know, you can actually think about uh, uh, in, in, that, in that manner. So having uh, you know, gone through so many tanks and so many streams. Uh, personally, I would like to, you know, advocate is that, uh, you know, do your weekly water change still. However, for certain tanks that are not required, you don't have to change it, right? Because there's no, no real need for it. Um, then again, you know, um, doing water changes and having stream die. Uh, so I have that in the very beginning of, you know, when I started stream, stream breeding, uh, however, as I progress on, I, I learn about, you know, uh, things like this, like, you know, not doing too much water change. Uh, I reduce the amount of water changes um, and then, of course, reduce the frequency if required. So these are some of the things that um, I learn, I unlearn, you know, and then I relearn again. And, and it actually helps in terms of uh, increasing the survivability of the streams. So, so I hope you get uh, very good knowledge out of it. Uh, thank you for watching this video and if you like this video, please remember to uh, give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and until next time, peace out.